meeting, and I got a number of people who got their hands raised to ask some questions. But can you just one blank I missed was the MSBA ended up with 43, 44 percent reimbursement. Is that but the way? The, I heard? So they are our finance agreement with them. It states 63.5 percent. Okay. And and that is the amount they will reimburse on the total facility grant of reimbursable costs. Eligible costs. Yeah, eligible. So that's really important. So is eligible. that above the construction cap? Nope, it, it's within it. So we we knew, so we, we have 63.5% on everything that is eligible and reimbursable. And then, which, you know, was, um, you know, take that of, of one, 109, and then everything off of that, after that, was on us. And then we added, so there are things that you must have um, by MSBA standards that they will not reimburse you. Correct. Um, and then we added stuff from our visioning process, like the playing field, and knew that total cost, it would be in our total bond, but we would not get a penny for that. It's it's all true. It's all I think we're in the same game with yeah. with the the issue or, or that we have, and, and I think it's a bigger issue in Hoyoke, is you know when the MSBA says Hoyoke is automatic eighty percent, right? But they throw out this construction cap exactly. you know, of eligible yep. costs. Well, right. it's construction that we want the reimbursement on. We understand there's other things we have to do on our own, but. You don't get close to 80% on a construction cost. Right. It throws the, the formula off incredible. But now I'm, yeah. I'm jumping ahead because I got three people that raised their hands already. Is there, and I'll, I'll go in order in one second, is there any other revenue identified to lower what the taxpayers will be paying on their on their bill? Have you found any other revenue that you cannabis, can use? Cannabis, Airbnb, we just um, put an Airbnb tax. Um, but and we're working on bringing housing and mixed use development in on um, online in the next three years. I will say, even though it's an indirect, um, with that one development at One Ferry Street, because of the school, uh, we looked and developed um, local economic initiatives for that to happen. So a diff and a tiff, because we know we needed the growth, and and without that. Um, the other is River Valley Market. Uh, we competed very hard for them to come to East Hampton and worked with them extremely, extremely, extremely hard to get $15 million of new market tax credits to, to sow the deal, like to, to solidify the deal. So it, it, we just started looking. It just The MBA formula and how they do things, it's just so concrete. Um, you know, like 8% of your project for site plan, you know, prep. I, I, yeah, that we sneezed that away, <laughs> you know, or the 8% contingency that has to be in. I mean, you know, people were all excited in the beginning of the project because it looked like our contingency was 18%, but that's just because we were starting the project and it, it's gone down as things have come up or, or we've, you know, need to investigate it. Like, one of the big questions was, um, will the school sink because the back is, is um, wetland, so we had extra boring done, and, and we have an extra plant, we have these fancy pylons, and we're packing it with clay and, and whatnot to satisfy. That came at a cost to, you know, that helped us get over 8% on our, our prep, so. Thank you. Councilor Leahy. <coughs> Excuse me. I, yeah, thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Mayor uh, Lashabelle, for coming in and, and sharing your time with us um, because you uh, obviously uh, know what you're talking about. I mean, that timeline was spectacular, and that's uh, exa exactly what Joe had said. This is what we're going through now. One of the things that you pointed out, <coughs> excuse me, is the rolling fact sheet. Um, I think that's something that we should be doing in the city of Oyo because, unfortunately, this is a very emotional issue, as, oh, it, yeah. mm -hmm. as you indicated in, in, in your city as well. Uh, uh, so there's there's people that are on both sides of this issue, right. and um, I think there's a lot of fake news. I hate to use that word, but yeah, I think there's a, just a lot of fake numbers that uh, p people are seeing differently, and people are, um, and so that's causing a lot of um, it's causing a lot of uh, you know just uh, noise um, through mm -hmm. our healthy conversation yeah. that we should be having. Um, one of the things that popped out at me uh, was. Um, is there anything that you guys left out that now 
sitting here you wish you had put in or fought harder for or we should have been uh earlier on uh very clear about what was the reimbursable cost and what was going to be non-reimbursable to get to that that actual percent that the city was giving us i mean i'm sorry the state was giving us so you know we should have done that almost right away and the conversation we we didn't because we felt like in the in the budget there were so many things that were fluid we didn't know what it was going to be but i wish we had done that sooner um i also you know wish i had started really looking at capital improvement and the stormwater management plan sooner to figure out what else we could do i mean so the school site is full of water and has culverts and and we're going to overlap with some of that but to do that that um sooner um and then the i think we should have advertised more the different options so public forums are public forums you can put them on the website but um to go out like into the schools Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, where people, like, you know, uh, go to Shelburne Fall Coffee Roasters and have folks sitting there, and, and we we should have done that. We would have, and not that we would have converted no's to yeses, but it would have helped us get folks who are for it to the polls faster, and, and at the end, we ended up pushing really hard. So there would have been yes, but they're thinking, oh, it's one vote, why would I come out? And as we're, we're looking at the numbers... And in the end, that was what it was, the long-term savings for taxpayers. All right. One of the concerns that I have, too, is um, this uh, geothermal, because I think that's a great idea. I know um, yeah. a, lot of, uh, a lot of people, not a lot, but I know a handful of people in Ireland that have uh, gone that way. Yeah. And it, it takes a while to get hot or warm, but uh, once it's warm, it's, it's perfect. Um, and we have an issue with the natural gas. You know, we're, yeah. we, don't, we can't put any more people on. Um, so that's a concern for me, too. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting, um, I've been looking into this as well, and I'm going to file an order on this, is um, an Airbnb tax. Um, I think that is something that's needed in the city of Hoyoke. Um, I fought for and got it passed, um, uh, the hotel tax. Uh, we were able to raise that. The way I looked at it um, is people are coming outside of your community, staying in your community. Mm -hmm. You might as well get the benefit of their tax. Yeah. Now, I voted against um, the restaurant tax because I think that's going to all the people that are in your community for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But the Airbnb tax, I think that's a good one. I also think it should be identified who has an Airbnb right. because you don't know who they're renting it to. So um, I actually just learned all about this in a coffee hour I did a couple of weeks ago. So I am looking to that, yeah. and that's going to be another um, a, a revenue stream. I, uh, can I just say something? Of like course. So it's not statewide yet, um, but there are a couple of other mayors in other cities um, that have made agreements with Airbnb and HomeAway, and they have to report in a community who is Airbnb and who is HomeAway. So it's really great because, one, you know where the tax comes from, and, and you're getting it from Airbnb, not from the homeowners. But the other thing for public safety, you know who's renting out. So if something goes wrong, or you're going to a house, and it's, you know, Nicole Chappelle, but it says, you know, um, Joe McGivern owns it, the police and fire understand that there's a, a rent there, but um, and we're thinking about that. And we also went for the full six percent. Six percent? Did you? We did. Okay. Good. Yeah, because I noticed that it's a sliding scale. You get yeah, there. no, we went for the six. Yeah, why not? Um, um, I know a lot of other people have some questions. I just, I really think that the city of Hoyoke should be doing this rolling fact sheet. And you, did you do that on your homepage? Or was this a yeah, page? so we we posted it as we were doing it. We posted it on our landing page, and then the school department made a special page, and every single a piece of information um, went on there, and it's still up there. Okay. And and the rolling, I don't know. I think we got to. I think by the end of it, it was like forty some odd questions. I think on one on the website starts at um, stops at twenty eight. That's great. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you. How's Lucy? Thank you so much. Um, thanks, Mayor LaChapelle, for coming in on Facebook living, just so you know. Oh. <laughs> That's what With the dinosaur. Dinosaur is here for support. <laughs> gotcha. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I understood the numbers properly. Um, so your project for one consolidated middle, uh, elementary and middle school was $109 million. Yes. OK. Um, so that's basically analogous to the 132 that we're paying for the two middle schools here. 
it, it, the numbers seem very similar. I didn't. Yeah, it's just in terms of the, pro the total project costs, right? Yep. Um, and then your reimbursement rate through MSBA is the 63.5%, which right. would be analogous to our 80%, and yet your effective reimbursement rate was about 43, 44%. 44 to, to 49, we don't know yet. Okay. Our, our project, we need to wait for the bids. And, is, and so is the 44, 49, it's slide in because of like uh, additional grants that you've been able to secure? Or um, where does it's that how we structured our bids. You know, we, I didn't talk about, but when we structured the RFP, a lot of it is dictated by MSBA, but we also looked at, at things that, you know, how we phrase the ad alternates, how we, we talked about some of the, the materials that could be used or substituted. Okay, so that will, uh, that's something that you built into the RFP, RFP, RFP process yeah. to allow for greater mm -hmm. um, flexibility right. in terms of what you'll actually get reimbursed for in the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I did hear you talk about um, safe routes to school, traffic mitigation, planning grants. Are those federal and or state grants, or, or where do they come from? They, they're state. The money comes, some of them, it's federal money that comes through the state, but they're all, they're all coming through MassDOT and... Um, I always get uh, development, housing, I don't know what Jay Ash used to do, Keneally doesn't know. So <laughs> I'm working on my jargon in six. Your alphabet soup of yeah, the department. Um, yeah, so I mean, they, it was all state. We didn't, uh, the federal money that will offset and help us redistribute costs, um, federal money around stormwater, uh, tax credits to get new growth in, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, are those things that you were able, these sorts of like, offsets, were you able to secure them in advance of the project? Or now that you have the project, is this where you're able to say, we have this project and, you know, No, we, we were, some of it, we just, like the um, housing production and needs grant um, we just got, but there were other, um, like creating the uh, district improvement zone for One Ferry Street and mm -hmm. New Market Tax Credits. I mean, we, when, when we had a pretty good scope of the financial impact, it changed what grants we went after. And we focused on new growth, new growth, new growth. Mm -hmm. So that's in some ways happening alongside of the project itself. So like not yeah. only is the project um, happening and bringing in um, grants, um, as well as the MF MSBA yeah. reimbursement, but now you have a vision for how you're going to structure yeah. the, the downtown area or the area around that area <laughs> and in uh, the, the downtown. So, so it's helping you to advance essentially your, your vision for planning community development. Right, I mean, you know, for the new schools, um, or when the new school opens and we have three, um, we have three school properties coming on. It's all right downtown in our downtown district. Um, because of what we've done with the schools and we know what the impact is mm -hmm. on taxpayers, mm -hmm. you know, I for one am pushing very hard that that goes private and mm -hmm. we don't keep it as a public building. You know, and, and one of the arguments is we're gonna put ourselves in the same place we are with those, those buildings. We need new growth. Um, new, we do have a meals tax, Airbnb, whatever it's going to be. Mm -hmm. We need to build that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need to keep on right. uh, expanding Other than the tax using base. Using an old building for like a council on aging or something like that. Right, right, great. Um, and then let's see, I had a couple, just a few more questions here, uh, if I could find them. Oh, yeah, so when, when your voters in East Hampton went to the poll, um, what was the number that they were voting on? What would they anticipate that the tax increase was going to be when they went to the, the poll? They, they really, whatever number was in their head. <laughs> can't be in the question. So some of them, you know, were with the 4.5% and it could go up, you know, $4 and some was $3. Um, it ended up the, the message that we think won, especially by the margin that it won, um, you know, we, we figured it's consistent message from day one and we just didn't flinch from that. Um, and then two, we went to its community values and we value public schools and our public schools have no chance to get better unless we vote for this regardless of the cost. Mm -hmm. And, and um, what was your, like when you're forecasting at that four and a half to 5%, what was the, what was the range that was being projected for, I guess, 20, 25, uh, 30 yeah, years? It was like 684 to 1,000. 
I mean, when we started the project and thought it was going to be $125 million or that's what we put forward, it, it was over $1,200 for a high-end house in, in East Hampton. It was really, those were dire days. And then started whittling the project and, and getting more realistic. Okay, so um, when, when voters went to the ballot, um, they were basically using information that was provided by the city that said somewhere within the range of $684 to $1,100 um, yeah. It's going to be your yeah. uh, average homeowner's tax increase right. per year for the 20, 30 years. And we, um, as the school building committee and as mayor, we promised that the total project would not go over 109 mm -hmm. and, um, and, me, and then took each city councilor and had them do a PSA saying that they were supporting the schools. So that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I guess that's in some ways, um, at some point in time, this city council will have to vote to authorize spending up to a certain amount. And so that creates the, the cap the threshold um, for, for spending. And, and, and that's the promise that we make to the voters, right? There's no blank check out there. It's there, there's a promise we authorize there's spending that, up to right. this amount. You know, and, and that was, you know, difficult and interesting to limit at 109 because there are other things that probably long term we should have done for the building but it's what the community agreed on and could afford at the time yeah there's a social contract of yep, sorts there exactly um and then finally so while voters went to the polls with this 684 to 1100 um, dollar um potential tax increase in mind yep. the number that i hear you saying is that um the average increase is going to be about 540 584 i think 585 no, 548, <coughs> maybe I. That's why I'm not the city treasurer. <laughs> 543 and 40 cents. Yeah. 543. Yeah. Um, so it came down significantly, um, and that was, it I think, uh, what I'm hearing you saying is in part because of your, your bond rating. Uh, bond rating and the time you go to bond market. Um, it was just, we really, we positioned it. We were very aggressive. <laughs> We, you know, and, and bond, you know, your financial analyst and your bond counsel, I'm sure will tell you the same thing mm -hmm. of, you know, Mondays, you know, if it's really lucrative, make sure you're the biggest bond on the market. So mm -hmm. do it on the mayor's birthday. <laughs> Two days. April 1st, so. Oh, yeah. Roll of the dice. <coughs> yeah. So I think um, what we're hearing from our financial advisor is something some I mean think they, they even recommended that the City Council um, vote to authorize the bond in advance of the ballot uh, referendum so that as soon as the voters said yes we yeah. would be able to lock in that interest rate but <coughs> I think right now we're looking at uh, within a hundred days of the ballot referendum passing and really trying to capitalize on the low interest environment that we see ourselves in now and and that would we um, I don't know if we ever got that advice I do know that the City Council would have never done that um, that said, when, when we were at that point, the bond market was, was just not as advantageous. I'm not saying we weren't in a rush, but we looked, you know, we talked to our financial advisor and they were like, maybe this gets better in the fall. Like, maybe you're not, make sure you get the ballot. And, um, and then there were some delays in the project and clearly the public conversation wasn't at the point where we could have swapped that. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we voted on May 22nd and, uh. I think the final vote by the city council was late August. So Great. there was some time. Great. Well, this is really helpful um, context to, to work with, and I, I appreciate it. I'll, I'll see if anyone else wants to ask some questions, and maybe I'll come back to a few others. Yep. Okay. Council McGee? Oh, I didn't raise my hand, but sure. First, um, I'd like to say thank you for coming down. Um, I know your time is very busy, so we appreciate you taking your time out to come here. Um, for what we've been trying to do is get as much information as possible yeah. regarding the project to then get it out to the public for the vote and then mm -hmm. and deal with it because the financing as I see it is it's a moving target it is and that's that's the hard part to try and tell the public yeah. you got to vote for a project but the number might not be the number oh. when ultimately is said and done and that and that's a tough one that's why I really wanted you to come in I, and I did consult with uh, Lisi on this and she said she sat with you on a meeting and, and got all this great intel and I said let's bring her in and we're supposed to be combined but it got separated so it's, it's a joint yeah. order just okay. let you know um, it, it, and I appreciate it I mean it, it's great information it's more information to get out to the public uh, I was looking at my watch not because of timing because this is what my wife bought me 
and it sends text messages. Oh, wow. So I got a text from Ryan saying that the communication system was down, but it's oh. now back up. So the first half was missing. We have now to start it's over. running. What? We have to start over. No, it's gonna. However, it's all on Facebook Live. Yeah, it's Facebook Live. There we the go. Right. So it, it is there. Uh, I just want to let people know why I, this thing scares me. So it actually rings. Uh, but anyways, uh, one thing on the Airbnb, you don't have to file an order, Councilor Leahy. It's in finance. I filed it uh, months ago. When did you approve your Airbnb? Is my question. Your tax. Um, to about a month after it was a local option. We didn't do it right away. I, cause I, I filed the order and legal came back telling us that we couldn't file it yet because the governor had right. not approved it, it yet. Right. So if it's approved, we should just pull it from committee. Yeah, I mean. 15th and just put a 6% tax in why, I don't why think it, It's probably in the orange committee because it's not in finance. You know, I came here because I sat with you on it. We'll check. We'll confirm where what yes. committee it's on. If that's going to ordinance, that, we'll send it to ordinance. One thing is, it's unfair because every town can do six percent except for one town, one big city, Boston. They get to do six and a half. Of well, we put six and a half. See if they'll say no. Right. right. Uh, Maybe they won't catch it. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's something that you know, any, anything that we can do to to help offset the cost is what we should be doing, and all the other stuff that we talked about, the Airbnbs giving notice and stuff. It, it should be there. so. If it's in committee, if we can act on it on the fifteenth, we should. If not, we'll go through the process. But it is there. Um, my question would be is, uh, when ultimately, you know, with the numbers being, you know, it was one oh nine, one oh six. Yeah. You're going to get 66 point, uh, or 63 point five, but ultimately it'll be, you know, just call it 49 percent. Yep. How did you get that type of communication out to people to, to say, okay, here's the cost, yep. this is the max, but if all these other things come in with state grants, federal grants, yep. bidding, RFP, how how is that given to the public? Say, although your cost is 50 million, yep. ultimately it could be. 41 because of all these how did you kind of like position that to tell people what the true issue so be? that was one of the things that you know if I could go back in time we would have started giving those numbers and getting them out in you know Excel, Excel spreadsheets like comparing them earlier and what we were comparing is if we went with option a which was 125 million and uh, you know 112 and 109 so we picked one not oh nine and then we realized trigger like we need to go back and say we're not getting 63.5 percent or you know we're we're actually it's going to be closer to like 39 percent and and so we went right out and said these are the things that the community from the community visioning process and said remember you wanted this and you wanted this and you wanted this and made the case that at first school the last 50 years there were things that MSBA said we had to do that we weren't getting any money for and there were things that our community really wanted and and we were we needed to do it through this bonding because there was no other way we were going to get those things affordably like so even for somebody to pay 50% of a cost you know overall um, was better than us trying to get a maintenance building like East Hampton Public Schools have never had a maintenance building for all of their stuff and our we have equipment that literally rusts um, from where it is so to you know we rolled that in and we made that and people realized like this is a good hedge against deferred maintenance um, you know we had to close the school middle school down last winter a couple of days because our machine shop um, in building ops had to make the part for the fume the furnace because it's that old so we kept bringing that up so this is why we need a furnace like this and you know, this is why we're going with gas rather than geothermal. And the site was perfect for geothermal, but it was just too expensive. Did did, did the state do a study for you on your three buildings, the three yes. elementary school, and they came back with ratings on them? Yes. And how bad were the ratings? Oh, how good were the ratings? Yeah, I mean, like in one of them, Maple Street School, the rates of asthma in the school were through the roof. Um, you know, the even with... Um, in Center and Pepin, you know, there was uh, circulation issues, accessibility issues, um, the uh, the type of paint, uh, while it wasn't lead, was flaking and uh, was very hard to repair because it was on plaster. 
Um, the outside space was totally inadequate, and at some point it was all paved over, um, and that sort of things. And they, you know, and they basically, you know, the heating systems, steam radiators. Um, there was, you know, the the state was like, you can fix it if you'd like to, and we got estimates, you know, to fix it, and the state helped us get those. So they said, but we're not giving you any money for that. Mm -hmm. um, and they also forced us into like we didn't ask at, we didn't ask until this project to do a consolidated school. I mean, it was this is what we think is best. And when our superintendent then said, "Well, we can consider a co consolidated school," we got accepted into the program, and they said, "You know, submit." So it's not as if the com the community accepted the school as it was built but it's not what the community vision was. It was neighborhood schools, somehow to replace, you know, those, those schools to be, I mean, a lot of our kids can walk to school, we're small. Um, and that was, a, that was a huge bitter pill for everybody to, I mean, we'll have 1,000 kids in one building um, with the school, and we have 1,500 total. And everybody else is at the high school. A couple other questions, and I'll, I'll turn it over. You're not in receivership, are you? Just we do make have, that clear. yeah, we do have some problematic schools. We have um, three. We just got up one from four, um, but no, not received. State has not taken over. Okay. Nope. The, the other one is, and it's been my point from from the very beginning is it, it's not about, and it's all about education for me. But it's not about education in this regard, in the sense of if you look at the report, kind of like what you had, you had yeah. three buildings that were just deplorable. Mm -hmm. a nice name for it. If you look at some of the buildings we have, they were given really bad ratings, which is, uh, some would say an F, which is deplorable. So if you look at our history, which I keep pointing to is, we changed from middle school system to a K to eight. Right. Therefore, way back when we said, well, we have facilities we don't need, tear them down. Kirtland School, where I went to, it's now a park right. too. Uh, uh, I think Highland torn down, a bunch of buildings torn down, yeah. Lynch School at Springdale. Springdale. So we had facilities to accommodate what we had, which yeah. was the middle school system. That is now gone because those buildings no longer mm -hmm. exist. And right. the buildings that we do have are so old, they're in a deplorable state or they're, they're bad, whatever term you want to use. So we don't have facilities, mm -hmm. which then if you go look at the report, it says the buildings that you have and the buildings that are now gone, you don't have the, the motive or the means to make a middle school system. Yeah. Hence why they said, we'll give you two. That's the state telling us, we'll give you two because you're in such a unique situation. Mm -hmm. That's my view of that report. Yeah. Which then is coming back to the numbers of how to deal with it, which is trying to get that communication out to the public. Is, right. Here's your top number. Right. It's probably not going to be that. Right. What the ultimate number will be is no one really can tell mm -hmm. you because there's all all these ancillary pieces that you have yeah. to fix. So, and I know you said certain things you did to educate, but I mean, having gone through it, what's the best way to tell people? Although this is the scary number, yeah, and it is scary. Oh, yes. I can't tell you what this number will be, but how can we? I mean, I guess our hurdle is almost trying to get to how to better educate. Because I'm still harassing the treasurer. I'm not going to lie to you. I, I've called again. Yeah. They're not calling me back. But I'm going to keep calling. Yeah. I'm not going to no, lie. I, I, yeah, the treasurer at the time in East Hampton literally didn't answer her phone until the, yeah. you know, the vote. So I mean, I'm going to keep I'm gonna yeah. keep calling the state. I'm calling the state. Yeah, well, the state you, treasurer. You, you yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not going to call your treasurer. Uh, <laughs> we have a new one. She starts on the 21st. So. But uh, it, yeah. I know what my job is and other counselors, but I, I'm trying to get that communication yeah. point out to people saying, this is scary, but it's ultimately not going to be that number. We all know that realistically, doing budgets and stuff and, and bonding. But, you know, what is a good piece you give us we, to tell the public? Yeah, so we put in and kept in these two charts about the, the options we explored with the state that they said no to, the option that was more than 109, and ran through what the state would give us or not give us. Um, and what that number looked like and the possible impact on taxpayers awesome. using a rate of 
So you use four percent, yeah, even I though mean, you got two point right. six. And and so we ended up with that, but it's a scary number. So we were worried, oh, we're gonna go out and say, hey, we're gonna, you know, be two point six or you know, no more than three percent. I mean, that's a I mean you're when we took the vote, we just knew that the bond I mean, the bond market wasn't great. Um, so we did not wanna lowball that. Uh, the other thing we did on the school committee, building committee forums, we we had um, our OPM, our project manager, who managed all the numbers, with that every single one on stage with us, and um, the architect. So if there was a question about like just build it with cinder blocks, like the architect was like, this is why we have to do it, and they spoke on the technical process, and um, Alan Minkus from Colliers could speak to how other communities did it as far as no matter what you do, the ballot question will not have a number. Like this is where you get the surety and this is why. Um, and, and the other big thing was, you, you know, you're asking, you know, the city council is going to give you an okay to appropriate, you know, $109 million. So that means you're gonna bond that. And then we're like, no, MSBA requires you to do the whole project and something goes, you know, really south and, and getting that out. Um, over and over and over again, earned media. Um, we also worked with our financial analysts um, internally with the treasurer who had all of the big illustrations. So when we were talking, even though there's a lot of variables, we, were, we knew what the impacts were gonna be. Like, so if it's 4%, we did a 4.5% because there was a scare that would go up. Um, and, and had the, the illustration tables in front of us and, and showed folks on slides, that stuff. And, and that came from the financial, our advisor, and sitting down with the financial advisor and the treasurer um, to talk about that and, and get our past investments, like how we handled them. Well, I can't thank you enough for coming down. I'll turn <coughs> it over to whoever else has questions. For the record, Councilor McGee, I put you on the, the hit list because I saw your hand go up. When wow. you said your hand didn't go up, Councillor Sullivan said, I'm ah, skipping over me again. See, Councillor Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> they always give the best for last. So. There we go. But uh, it's good because most of my questions get answered by the time, by the time you get to me. Okay. But um, the, first, the first one, Nicole, yep. you guys decided uh, to go to a pre-K to eight model. Right. And I'm on the building committee, and we've been told in no uncertain terms that that's a failed model. Yes, and that was a question. <laughs> yes, it was definitely a so, question. And I you, worked in some of the pre-K to eight model schools in Holyoke, and I, I would agree. I, I want a junior high back. I want Lynch back. Yeah. It's, um, so to, to the, our community did not want a pre-K eight, and that really affected the design of the building. Um, and we have basically um, like one third of an octopus. So there's a main building, and then there are three tentacles that go out, and that splits up the ages. So, you know, pre K, kindergarten one is in one, and then you've got like the middle of elementary school, and then the middle schoolers are in a different branch, and they come in different entrances. So middle school has their own entrance, and then elementary has their own entrance. And in the latest variation of the plan, there will be also another entrance for pre-K. We're pretty sure we can do that. We gotta wait for the bids to come in. So we made them as much as possible three different schools. So a kindergartner or a seventh grader can go through the day and not see other, other kids. Okay, that, that was important to me to know yeah. that. That was, no, that was really important to us. That was a big bone of contention of how we were going to do this. Right. So it's more of a campus than a, it is. a single school. And they have different play spaces. Like there's not one. And the gym, there's a, a massive gym, and, and there will be schedules of how they use it so there won't be, you know, a gym class of sixth graders and the second graders. Okay, great. Um, and just because uh, Todd was good enough to mention our... Uh, our, our goal to go after the state treasurer. I was at the homework house breakfast this morning and uh, ran into uh, Aaron Vega and mm -hmm. I put the offer out to him that I will pay for a bus. All right, I'll pay for it if he'll get, 
if our state rep will get us an appointment with the state treasurer yeah. and we can get a, any member of the city council, the school committee, the uh, school administration, the mayor, the, parents. the manager of the mall, parents, mm -hmm. business leaders, taxpayers association, right down the chamber of commerce. You get us appointment, I'll get the bus. All right, so that's, that's out there. And, and I, I, want I would to know that. encourage, like, so I went to, even if it wasn't, like a vote on a project, they were just discussing it. Um, I went to those meetings, MSBA, and our superintendent went to those meetings and members of the school building committee. So we would drive down and the um, treasurer is not always, she's the official chair of, of the MSBA. She wasn't there every single time, but you know, she knew we were there. And we stood up and you know was recognized because what they'll do is they'll say, you know, reviewing 60% um, design of the Hoya Middle Schools, and you know that's presented by the experts around the table. And then often they'll say, "Is anybody from Holyoke to speak to this project?" And you know to show the community support. And you know we would say, "This is what's going really well," or the 60% you know, part we figured out where the first graders would go, or or you know where the play space would be, or this was our challenge at 25% design, um, or we would just speak our um, undying gratitude to the MSBA and all their work. Um, just a quick one on the, on the design. Yeah. As you went through the stuff, did you were you presented with an option of uh, cross laminated timbers versus steel? That's budget cutting or uh, additional. What well, you mentioned. Uh, yeah. Um, afford, there were. Afford to a Cadillac. Here, I, I don't. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yes, there were choices. Yeah. Um, and on the const actual construction of the building, I know that MSBA had a, a lot of, of, there were no choices. Um, and I don't know about that, but like when we got to heating, uh, the kind of air conditioning units, um, the configuration of classrooms, so the heat would flow or cold would flow um, more easily. We did have a lot of input there and what we thought about were those elements and and how they would go to the overall RFP and and subs so but but there were some things were non-negotiable like the the things that I just didn't understand why were so important that no, we this, this wasn't a, a negotiable this wasn't with the state it was in the building plans with the architect we decided to go with yeah. the cross laminated timbers which increased the cost, I believe, by about 1.5 million. Yeah, so we, um, if they're allowed, like the architect won't suggest something that's not allowed by MSBA. No, it's it's allowed, yeah. but it's something we could have gone with steel instead. Right, and I don't know what percent you are. I mean, we scaled back, I mean, till the last minute before we had to walk in with 90%. I mean, we were rearranging things to figure out what, what we could save and how important things were. Um, to us. I mean, we, we pulled out, I don't know, in July, um, the roundabout from the actual bid of the school and put it as an ad alt because we were worried that it would be it would be so expensive when it went out to bid that it would blow apart our budget and we'd have to go back to the... Yeah, this, this wasn't a budget killer, but it did add a bit to yeah. the square foot price. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. All right. All set? Yep. I think you can see why Councilor Sullivan's on our building committee. Yes. <coughs> yes. It does a good job. Um, Mayor LaChapelle, um, we have a, a, we use tax classification. We have a split rate here in Hoyoke. Mm -hmm. And the impact on our business commercial community is yeah. far different than our residential is, community. Yeah. You do not use tax classification, correct? A single rate? It's a but you do have a, a, a very, um, vibrant business commercial district, you know, within East Hampton. What was, could you summarize how the business community reacted to the override and were they supportive in some cases, not um, supportive? Overall, the business community <coughs> was supportive. They were concerned. Um, for them, it was new schools. Um, the It would help them keep employees. You know, so we have small machine shops and precision machining shops, and it's a pretty, it's a growing, you know, sector of our business um, market in East Hampton, and they keep losing employees to Springfield or uh, to Hoyoke or in the middle of the state, and to have a new school and all of our students in the schools 
you know, which the oldest school would be 2013, was much more important to them than I ever expected it to be. Um, and, you know, it was, you know, there was the argument um, that we made and the assessors were helpful and a couple of folks on the board of assessors who are realtors kind of ran the market studies of what a new school does to values and, and what it does to the employment market. On the whole, the business community was, was okay with it. Um, and, you know, there were some kind of holdouts, but, but it wasn't, we involved the chamber. You know, we had a, a sit down with the chamber a couple of times. Um, but the pushback, I mean, very different than here, but it wasn't a lot. And the city council, oh, sorry. Has your city council taken the vote on the bond yet? Yes. They have. Yeah. And what was the, the number was the? 109. The 109, yes. obviously. But <clears throat> when they took the vote, it was after the override vote? Yes. Okay. Yep. Mon it ended up in months because <clears throat> we kept having stalls like with the design process of getting to the the 90 percent now to keep councillor sullivan from being mad at me he'll be the first person to have a second chance to ask the questions it was pretty much along the same vein as what you just yeah. asked so i'm good okay that's late yeah so um thank you for that um and my last question, or one of my questions, is that you guys went down to the uh, Boston to the meetings and whatnot. Mm. Um, earlier, you prefaced by saying that uh, the MSBA was not um, uh, not very pliable. They didn't. They were very set in their ways with the numbers and whatnot. Yeah. Did you did, did anything change by attending meetings, or did you get any other percentage increase? We did. We ended up getting an additional. We well, we lost a point because I opened my mouth. <laughs> Um, but we we ended up we ended we ended up with uh, like a point a point and a half um, that helped us with the reimbursement rate. Uh, we were thinking our reimbursement rate will be would be under sixty, and at one point we thought we'd be at like fifty three. And we we're hopeful, and so when it came back, it had sixty three point five, and that was us pushing. Uh, tell us about how you lost the point. So Maybe I, you don't I, want to. I tried to I you know. I'm gonna just say I was a new mayor and I read right. something wrong. Yeah, but um, but we got you know we ended up. But that was because we went to the you know the MSBA buildings and we also were on the phone with our project managers on the MSBA all the time. Because saying. we had the gentleman in uh, from the MSBA. Jack McCarthy. Jack McCarthy. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. And he was pretty set in his ways. Jack. Uh, J yes, Mr. McCarthy. Yes. Yes, he. You sat in the same seat you're sitting in now. Yeah. And uh, so I, I was just thinking that there's no room to negotiate. There's no leverage. Uh, there are ways, like your finance agreement um, with them. There's some wiggle room there um, on design. What's an ad alt? Um, what's not an ad alt? Um, I mean, because there's also like when I was talking about offsetting the cost. So we pushed really hard, and one of our well, we actually got it into the first formal like the bid, what we thought would be the bid, a roundabout. Mm -hmm. I mean, educational right. helps. It's safety, um, but, but we pushed for that because we knew we weren't going to be able to afford it any other time. We were just not getting. And it works well. Um, the route, well, we haven't built it yet, okay. and now because we're worried about the the price of it, ultimately, it was too much of a variable when we were ready to submit um, to MSBA. We pushed it down to an ad. Um, an ad alt. So we have four ad alts onto this project, and uh, um, you know we'll see when the bids come through and if we can. Yeah. The last count. thing I'm going to say once again, thank you for coming in and spending no, your time with us. It. And but that uh, fact sheet idea, of how about rolling yeah. every question that comes up because the noise on either side of it is just too much. And there's yeah. just and I hate to say the word, but so much fake news and from yeah, it's a very emotional topic. And just we just kept and, posting like the document, the questions. Um, and I would, I would encourage you, the, um, the forum slide deck that we used over and over again, when we're talking about comparing that numbers and how we did that, those charts are all on there. Mm -hmm. And then we updated them. So, I mean, you can, you can see when the numbers get more and more fearless as we went on, because we were like, oh boy, we need to talk about this. Like, this cannot be, you know, a week before our vote on May 22nd. Right. Like, it's got to get out there. Thank you. Um, yeah. I'll yield to Mayor, when we learned about the construction cap formula and what it would mean yeah. this year to everybody, yeah. 
it was an eye opener. Um, our project developer, one of the items she brought up is that there are five incentives out there that can get you above the yep. cap. Mm -hmm. And then she looked at us and said, but you're automatically 80%, or Jack McCarthy looked at us and said, because you're automatically 80%, you can't use the five incentives. And my jaw dropped again because I said, if we're automatically 80%, why are we getting 58, 59%? Because, and of course, because of the construction cap, but we can't use them. Was East Hampton allowed to use any incentives to go above? We're, we qualified for the, we, we could make the case for incentives. We did not get all five. Um, you get a couple? <laughs> you got yeah. one? No, we didn't. And when I say points, nope, we got a couple that, for okay, That's leads. the point you're talking yep. about. Okay. Nope. Oh, and, okay. and then, okay. you know, I was making a case. If, if the school is located, so if your city has a 40R district, you get the incentive. Okay. And um, when I was asked about that, I said, yes, it's adjacent to the 40R, and that doesn't count. It has to be in the 40R. And the the high school is just in it when we built that, and it, it the new school isn't. So that's something we didn't qualify for. But the environmental ones, and, and we, we got some incentives there. But I mean, the, um, I mean, as far as the construction cap, and, and then finding out, like I was even amazed, if we cut off, it, if, if we just said we are only going to do the reimbursables, uh, for the school, the school could not be built because there are non-reimbursable costs that the state says you have to do, and that like turned my head around. Yeah. And and it's not negotiable. Um, and our, you know, our narrative around that became um, more of um, it's not that we're missing out on this difference between 63.5 percent and actually going down to 49. It's that would we ever get 49% um, of a grant to build a school or do anything? And, and the economic differences and just the demographics of Hoyoke are very different. I mean, um, but that was the narrative. We just like, yep, these are the rules we have to accept. They are not great. Um, but where are we gonna, when are we gonna get a facilities grant, you know, for so, of so millions and millions of dollars? The uh, one thing Jack McCarthy did, um, and I heard you say it earlier this evening, agree was that our design is not the Cadillac version, yeah. that it's a, a good design. Yep. And I give a lot of credit to uh, one of the paid building committee members, being uh, Whitney Anderson, who has been involved with our, yeah. in charge of our schools for years now. And, and I know he's, he's a no nonsense when it comes to uh, mm -hmm. what's best for the facilities. But that's... Uh, that's something that I think I think is important because the MSBA okay. was created 12 years ago to stop communities from just yeah. looking for a blank check and building whatever they felt like. But I think the formula has gone too far, and I think it hurts East Stampton. Mm -hmm. I know it hurts Hoyoke. Yeah, and, no, it, it was. I mean, it's it was a big, you know, risk that we took, and it's still a big risk. Um, but. It, the impact on Hoyle, it's just much different. I mean, as working in, in Hoyle schools, and, and I get that. I think, um, certainly, new schools in Hoyoke, I see is, is great for East Hampton. I think it just strengthens the area, um, and it's, it's, it's a good thing. Um, but, you know, some of the considerations are different. Having somebody like Councilor Sullivan on the board and Mr. Anderson is key. Our school building committee had our school maintenance person on it, um, but also two local developers um, who um, lived in East Hampton most of their, and they just knew how to cut. Like they challenged the architect all the time. Like there were sometimes I was like that guy, and he lived. The architect lived in East Hampton, and I was like, oh, he's never coming back to this meeting. <laughs> they were like, what do you do this, and why are you using that tile, and and just shaving off like literally five thousand dollars there or ten thousand or explaining to people what would wear better. So it was our school building committee was very active and questioned every decision and penny. Okay. Um, I promised Mayor LaChapelle an hour. We're just we're just hitting the hour right now. But Councillor Murphy for the first time, then Councillor Lisi to wrap up, and anyone else that has questions after that. You're forgetting me again. No, I didn't forget you. I said <laughs> anyone else. Nice. I, I called you what did I call you the other night? Nice, nice. One of the others? Yeah. 
Well, it'll be okay. <laughs> Councilor Murphy. And I too thank you for coming and offering your experience. Uh, a couple of things. Uh, you did indicate that your original goal was a 30-year bond. Uh, um, and just took a couple of things. What was the original? Was yeah. was the original interest rate expected on a 30-year bond four percent? No, no, that was a huge fight. Of of so East Hampton hasn't ever done a bond more than 20 years. And there was a section of the school building committee and a large organized group of community that said to lessen the impact on taxpayers, let's go to 30. Um, and, and we pushed back and forth on that. We were very careful when we did our illustrations. We always started with a 20 year bond because it made the most sense for the financial planning for the city, but we showed a 30 year bond um, just so folks could see the difference. And again, that. That was tough because they saw a lower amount, and you know we would just say, "But this is the interest that we're going to save." But if you do, if you were comparing and you were doing a thirty-year yeah. bond versus a twenty-year bond, what was the difference in interest rate? I, I, well, we we always kept the interest rate at four percent. We never assumed like whether it was thirty or twenty. We um, and the difference when we pushed it out ten years, um, I don't remember it offhand, but I think it's actually in the um, in the slide deck that we talked about it. Um, okay. But from the city point of view, from the mayor's office, a 30-year bond was never really an option in my head. Okay. And so with a 20-year bond, what is the yearly impact on your budget? On, uh, well, or revenues coming in? yeah, I mean, this year, it's an, it, just with the first interest payment, it's additional $4.5 million. And that's just interest? That's just interest, and then we'll have a, a similar uh, payment in July of, of 2020 in the next fiscal year. And so it's 4.5 yeah. for 20 years, or when? No, I mean, the went? interest varies, obviously, when the, some of it goes to principal. Um, we see a break where the interest goes down substantially in year 16, and there's a gap of you know two million dollars on, on the principal that I very seriously doubt I'd be mayor then but if I was I would take that two million dollars of principal and put it towards another capital improvement project so I knew my I really even though f there was talk about doing a small bar borrowing and just adding like a dollar five to the to the for the debt exclusion and then doing a bigger bonding so the tax rate went up slower um i i just think for the the city and what we got as a bond rate that it should be flat the term of the loan two dollars and 86 cents of debt exclusion on top of our our tax rate okay. and i think you did say you were originally the original estimate was 125 million the the school building that everyone wanted to build was 125 um, and what was that original building? Was it? It was a middle school. It was pre-K-8. We didn't have a choice on the pre-K-8. The school building commission said either you build this kind of school or we're not interested. We're not going to select your application to go forward. Um, so that was a state mandate? Yeah. I, I mean. Yeah. In order to, in order yeah. To no. It, it's, it was not the choice of the community to, to build a pre-K-8. I mean, if anybody, everybody got their way. It, Almost universally, it was um, three small school ele elementary schools in neighborhoods, um, okay. or one bigger kind of bigger elementary school, and then one smaller. Okay. And previously, you had an elementary, and then a middle, and then a high school. Yes, yeah, so we had three elementary schools, a middle school, and a high school. Okay. And and I would just make the point that our total school system, like all of our students, it's. 1,500 kids. I mean, our high school is like 540 students. So I mean, the just as far as the, the size um, of our schools. We also, I should mention, we lose a lot to charter and choice. So we lose, um, last year we, we lost $2.3 million because of charter and choice. Wow. Almost three, uh, 370 kids. That's where we are too. Yeah. Yeah. We have 1,500, yeah. yeah. What's your budget? <laughs> yeah. No, so that's huge. I mean, in the new school, that was kind of a part of it, that the people were more likely to come back if 
you know, the school was newer and, and whatnot. That was a big... Um, okay, awesome. That's Murphy. The, the good news is both our communities will, gen will benefit from the new Chapter 70 uh, language if it is ever fully implemented. We barely. Yeah, you guys do well. I, you know. <laughs> I was trying to be nice. Yeah, no, no, we don't. Who knows? Hoping on the house. Yeah. Councilor Lacey. Thanks. I'll, I'll try to wrap things up here. I just want, since we were talking about it, um, we actually lose uh, $2.7 million to our district to school choice, and we, we lose another $12.5 million to charters. So that's roughly $15 million that we're losing to choice and charter schools that, that we that still makes, have to pay for. Yeah. And, and the charter taking, you know, not that I don't want Chapter 70 money, but we just need some relief from that charter. I mean, it just we can't win um, at all. And I know most communities are in that place. Um, and we talked a lot about that. That got nasty, mm -hmm. uh, the charter versus public school. And we, you know, we, we came out there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's Yeah. And, and it's like parents and students should have choice. It's the state that's making it contentious. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just want to recap a couple of highlights and so it seems you were in the pipeline the MSBA pi pipeline for um, For re reimbursement support and a grant for about 10 years. Yes, they kept rejecting our applications because so, Until you went to the the pre-k to yeah. eight model yep. because your, your other three elementary schools were too old and they said they wouldn't um, reimburse for right. renovation or repair yep. and they weren't going to they didn't want to build a new elementary school for 200 kids um, because the other two buildings that we had were going to be as bad as that first one in a matter of years. Right. Um, and then, um, so f just following the ballot vote, it seems like there's also going to be an additional design phase where we may be able to manipulate the project in some way and, yeah. and bring the, the, the number down further. Um, so, you know, there might be another uh, chance for Councilor Sullivan to replace the, the pine wood structure with uh, steel or, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not, it's, not pine, it's not pine wood. Cross-laminated timbers are the way to go. Cross-laminated timbers. We're spending a lot of extra for something very futuristic. Okay, great. I love that. <laughs> so then, um, let me see here. Da, 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 da. Um, Oh yeah, there's a number of non-reimbursables that the MSBA requires yeah. um, to be built into the project, but they're just not going to reimburse them. And I, I believe that um, the architect has um, actually carved out um, some of those non-reimbursables right. for us so that we could go after state and federal dollars. Mm -hmm. um, because for, as far as I understand, if we get a grant for something that the MSBA reimburses, then they cut they back out. on yes. what they're actually giving us. And so we don't want to touch what the, re the, the MSBA is reimbursing us on, but for some of these non-reimbursables, we should be um, aggressively going after um, grants and funding to support that. Yeah, I mean, we, we looked at some of those grants um, and we're just, um, so we're a small city and we're not rural. Um, we're actually classified as urban. Mm -hmm. So we kind of fall in between. So I like to say we're a gateway city to a gateway city, but it <laughs> doesn't work on those grant applications. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and then just also, I know that it's been raised here a couple times, like the, uh, the fact sheet. I just do want to uh, make sure that the public is aware that the Holy Public Schools has been publishing fact sheets all along with official numbers, and um, they're posted on the Holy Public Schools website under the middle school um, plan. Um, so the fact sheets are out there. I definitely um, agree that we should probably make them more easily accessible through the city's own website. Yeah, that made a big difference. Um, and then additionally, the, the <coughs> slide comparisons that um, the financial analyst had provided you, um, we do also have those from Hilltop, and, and they are scattered about, but maybe it makes sense to um, locate some of these fact sheets and slides from, you know, I mean, you know, the city, the public schools, our financial analysts, these are our official numbers. They, they are with everything you know uh, at that time, and they change um, with the... Um, charts that we had made and updated, we would attach it to a specific question somebody asked. Um, so they, it's like, nope, it's chart 12. Like, look, this is your question. 
the numbers that directly address that. Like, what are the non-reimbursable costs that we have to do? Just pulling those out so people saw that and understood it was a part of MSBA. What is the number, what's non-reimbursable that we're adding in because we think our kids really need it? Mm -hmm. and, and break it down that way um, and answer the chart, answers a question. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and I think that it's, it's important for um, members of the community to see that the numbers that are on like City Hall's website or the, the public school's website are, are really the, the official numbers that we're working with to the right. best of our ability to uh, understand um, where the numbers are going to fall because it, there is some fluidity to the market and the way that we have to um, bond for this project. And the message that everyone who wants to answer the questions or speak to it all has the same fact sheet. That was another kind of thing that just popped in my yeah, Everybody kind of presented answers to the question in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and we're like, let's all agree to use this, whether they were part of the school building committee or the ballot question committee. Like, this is what it is. This is right from, you know, our experts that are doing it. So the same, I mean, it just got to a point where people just saw the information over and over and over again. Yeah, I, th I think that it would be really valuable for our community to, to be able to depend on, you know, some place to go for Th those numbers, and so I'll, I'll be mentioning to the um, mayor and his office that we need to carve out a page somewhere for that. Whoever's doing the Instagram account for the school, I don't know if it's the committee, it's really good. Like, I thought it, it, whoever is doing the Instagram, I don't know if it's whatever the best to invest or whatnot, it's super good. And I don't know if they're getting the numbers from the city or not, but I mean, it, it's really good. Kudos to whoever's doing that. I'm all set, thank you. You're welcome. For the final and last time, at least tonight, Councilor Sullivan. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't wanna go off too much on the, uh, the, the work of the building committee, but the, uh, just to mention again, because uh, I'm glad Rebecca brought up the cross-laminated timbers. It's, <laughs> it's green, green. It's, it's much uh, more carbon friendly and everything than the manufacturing uh -huh. process that goes into uh, steel beams. Uh, anybody that wants to see them, they're, they're in the over design, the new over design building up at UMass. Oh, that's beautiful. And, it's, uh, uh, and aesthetically, it's beautiful. Also, mm -hmm. it's a place. It adds to make it a place where people want to go to. Uh, that mm -hmm. It's warm. But the uh, the other thing about it, I liked it, is showcasing in Hoyoke. It's a huge manufacturing opportunity in a, a town that des desperately needs to attract. Uh, business manufacturing businesses back to it. Uh, they're only available in Canada. They're not manufactured anywhere in the United States, mm. which is was interesting to me. But um, you, you mentioned earlier when you talked about um, doing something to afford relief for seniors and uh, people yes. on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. Could you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, so we, um, under 41C, um, looks at a senior exemption from taxes. Um, we had, I. We were at $600 um, seniors could apply. We brought it up to $1,000 um, right before the um, vote. Um, before the vote? Yes, before the vote. Um, and we'll look again this year. Um, you can go up to 1200 so I'll be seeking to go to $1,200. Um, the state cap is supposed to go up to $1,500 um, to, to get seniors relief. The downside or the, the cautionary tale to that, um, seniors who qualify that, it, it is based on their income, and they have to qualify on their income. So if they have assets like they own a plot of land or um, they have a small pension from somewhere, it, it's included. Um, so when if you're going to qualify, I mean, you're, you know, it, it's, it's not a lot of money. Um, and you, you don't qualify for it. But we do have people who access it, and we've had a couple of more people now that the amount is up, and we've publicized it. And do you think there might be a few more people in Hoyle that would qualify than in East Hampton? I, I would just say basically on the size, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Um, and uh, so that's the seniors. And um, so uh, back to Rebecca's question, well, that question sure. statement about the, the – uh, the time frame, the 10 years, you started this process in 2009. To get a new school, yeah. School, and I believe we were at it for five years, and the feeling is, what, what if you would, if the voters said no, 
you think you'd have been back in another 10-year quay or would it have been a one-year, two-year thing? What, what do you think would have happened? Um, I won't speculate. The, the person at the MSBA I talked to about it I just said, don't hold your breath if the voters say no. I think I've heard that quote, too. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm not, I'm not going to attribute that to anybody, <laughs> but yeah. Sounds like a McCarthyism. <laughs> not touching that. No <laughs> comment, sir. All right. That's it. You good? Yep. All good here. Mayor LaChapelle, Nicole, thank you. On behalf thank of you very much. Committee, the City Council, the Mayor, and all of our community for sharing East Hampton's uh, story. And I, I think neighbors like this, we should get together more often and have these discussions. No problem I with think that. they're very meaningful. Yeah. We have great breweries. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> the Next best time we water. go to East Hampton, yeah. right? <laughs> right. Best water in the country. Come drink with us. <laughs> Chair, we'll entertain a motion that both of these orders are complied with, and we'll make a report to the City Council next uh, Tuesday. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved real quick. Item number three is a time-sensitive grant. Uh, this comes to us through the DPW and the Engineering Department. I excuse both the superintendent and the engineer, and I'll explain why in one second. If anybody has questions, I can't answer. The $67,500 grant, there is no local match. It's, it's coming to us to do some work out in Pease Road. It's coming to us through the Department of Fish and Games Ecological Restoration. Uh, accepting the grant will allow a culvert to be replaced on Pease Road. That's part of the, this is part of the culvert replacement municipal assistance grant. And this will get the water under, uh, let's see, the bordering road out there. I'm trying to, I lost it. Co oh, County Road, right here, yep. So if, uh, if there's any further questions, I'll certainly, we have, we have a communication from both the engineer and the superintendent, but if there's any further questions, I'll certainly get answers for them or to share or entertain a motion. Let's just replace the culvert. The 24 inch culvert, you know, and, and to do some work that is very, I know it's very much needed out there and Councilor Vacant, I know is uh, supportive of it being more five. 67,500. No Motion made a second to approve. Recommend that to the full city council. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I also excused our building uh, department, um, uh, <laughs> that building commissioner, uh, for one reason. We could have done this last last week, but I thought it should come to committee because we were kind of busy last week at the full city two weeks ago at the full city council meeting. It's a, it's a request for a nine thousand dollar transfer from pay chief of wires into inspections uh, electric general. Uh, this is the ongoing where the chief of the chief of wires position, even with the new salary and the new position description, still is vacant. So this is paying the retired inspection, and Mr. Leahy will be abstaining from this vote to do the work until this position can be can be paid can be and filled. Person who's going out doing the inspections. Yes. Salary. Sometimes it's just a neighboring person that comes in per diem, and sometimes it's a. Uh, Another person that's qualified to, to do it. The motion is to approve. Motion made a second to receive and approve the transfer. Any other discussion? Comment. Councilor Comment. Leahy, Councilor Sullivan. Yep. Just because we've had this in front of us uh, and been debating it for quite some time, to compare, we're, we're taking the money from paid chief of wires. We still haven't been able to hire one. That's why we're taking it from there. The inspector of wires in Northampton makes sixty-four thousand dollars a year. They also have, as a master licensed master electrician, they also have in their city uh, DPW department a master electrician just to work on city properties at an additional $69,336. And Westfield pays $64,000, and it is a master electrician. So I just wanted to get that out there for everybody to see you know, what we're doing here and why. And what we're budgeting for and what we're trying to get in there. And right now we're just outsourcing it. And the person Mr. Cody brings in is a master electrician, just for the record. Yep. Any further discussion? On the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Motion Aye. to adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's an uh, early evening. It's also an important uh, meeting in terms of uh, the issues that are going on. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Any opposed? We stand adjourned. <laughs>